بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتدى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا صبروا وصابروا وقال تعالى ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين ونبي مالك الحارث بن ابن عاصم العشري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الطهور شطر الإيمان والحمد لله تملأ الميزان والسبحان الله والحمد لله تملأان أو تملأ ما بين السماوات والأرض والصلاة نور وصدقة برهان والصبر ضياء والقرآن حجة لك وليك كل الناس يغدو فبايع نفسه فمعتقها أو مبقها رواه مسلم These are verses of Quran as well as a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which command the sifat and the quality of patience, sabr and also explain virtues of exercising patience patience is a sifat, it is a quality that a human being is to enjoy and especially as Muslims one is to enjoy patience in matters or enjoy patience in in the, in the face of calamity and distress and difficulties but as mu'minin and as believers also exercising patience is also extends beyond that of calamities and difficulties but also to be to exercise patience with regards to matters with with the obedience of Allah wa ta'ala and even exercising patience in abstaining from prohibited and evil desires <coughs> sabr patience in its linguistic or rather in its meaning refers to the me or it refers to remaining firm upon that which the soul regards as difficult. The ulama have mentioned that it is one of the qualities of the prophets and it is a sign of complete iman when one patiently accepts the decision of Allah Ta'ala and is pleased with it. One who displays patience and does not become anxious in the face of difficulty or calamity will be blessed with peace and contentment from Allah wa Ta'ala. A mu'min, a believer, is continuously faced with changing circumstances and conditions through the passage of life, and these require patience. There are no numerous hadith which alludes to the virtue and the importance of patience in Islam. There are also verses of Quran which we mentioned or which we recited, one being in Surah Al Imran, verse 200. Where Allah Ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, be patient and compete with each other in patience. And in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 155, Allah Ta'ala also mentions that most certainly we will test you with a bit of fear and hunger and loss in wealth, lives and fruit. Give glad in Allah Ta'ala then tells us and give glad tidings to those who exercise patience. So here we find in these verses the command to exercise patience but also these virtues attached to it as well. We have mentioned also that patience is of three types, especially for with regards to us as mu'minin and believers. One is to exercise patience in the obedience of Allah wa ta'ala. Secondly is to exercise patience in, exp- in abstaining from prohibited and evil desires. And the other is exercising patience in the face of difficulties, calamities and tribulations. A renowned Zahid, a renowned ascetic, Junaid al-Baghdadi rahimahullah ta'ala had mentioned that patience is swallowing something bitter without frowning. Umar radiallahu anhu beautifully explained the value of patience by saying that never did any calamity befall me 
except that I found three bounties therein. Firstly, I appreciated that it did not affect my religion and my deen. Secondly, I appreciated that it did not affect me more severely than it did. And thirdly, <coughs> I reminded myself that Allah Ta'ala has promised immense rewards for those who are patient, where Allah Ta'ala says, and give clear tidings to the patient. In the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we find also there's numerous hadith, and one hadith which you mentioned here also, which was narrated by Abu Malik Al Ashari. He was a Sahabi of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the tribe of Ashar. And Ashar. And he passed away during the reign of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And approximately 27 ahadith are narrated from him. He mentions Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that purity is half of faith. The phrase Alhamdulillah fills the scale. The phrases Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah fill or the reward fills all the space between the heavens and the earth. Salah is a light. Charity is a proof. Patience is an illumination. And the Quran is a proof for you or against you. Every person departs in the morning and sells his soul by either freeing it from punishment or destroying it. <coughs> in this hadith, which Imam Nawi rahimahullah had mentioned or re- recorded it in his kitab, Riyadhul Salihin, that this hadith encapsulates the foundational principles of Islam. And also it atten- draws our attention to a number of virtuous deeds. One is Tahara, the other is praising Allah Ta'ala, Salah, Charity, Patience and Obedience to the Qur'an. In this also our deen teach attaches great importance to physical cleanliness and purity through ghusl, wudu and removal of impurities. Cleanliness is classified as half of Iman because Iman purifies the internal self while cleanliness purifies the external. Imam Ghazali rahimahullah has stated in Ihya that one should strive to cleanse the internal self of pride, jealousy, etc. just as one cleanses the external body with water. <coughs> the, two phrases of, the two phrases of praise mentioned in this hadith carry immense virtue because they express the pure and unblemished nature of Allah Ta'ala and declare man's weakness in the face of Allah Ta'ala's power. Also here, yeah, patience is described as an illumination. Here yeah, it means that the one who adopts this noble quality will be rightly guided. And it will also mean that patience illuminates darkness and difficulties. This hadith as well as the Quranic verses that we have mentioned teach us or it should inspire us towards to fulfilling the orders of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and to also it should motivate us to abstain from those because when we abstain from the things that are of the disobedience of Allah Ta'ala from the things that will disobey Allah Ta'ala to stay away from it is difficult it is a challenge it is hard especially on the nafs because the nafs desires these things and to Restrain oneself from it requires, as it is restraint, but it requires, uh, it requires determination, it requires um, perseverance. So a person, by 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 fulfilling or rather exercising patience, in this regard, will inshallah earn Allah's happiness and reward, and inshallah will get those glad tidings. That Allah has promised that there is immense reward for being patient. Allah Ta'ala has told us and that give glad tidings to those who are patient. So these are the two most important and most necessary things that we must abstain or rather we must exercise patience in. One is to exercise in the obedience of Allah. Perhaps performing salah may become, uh, may become for example, it may lead, like for example, a person performs salah with, uh, with in tahajjud salah or performs extra nawafil salah, and after some time, 
maybe out of fatigue or tiredness a person cannot continue doing as much as they were but perhaps through that perseverance because of understanding that I'm obeying Allah wa ta'ala, that person who exercises patience Allah will inshallah give that person istiqamah will give that person strength and continue to continue so these are these are the, this is the sifat of being a patient person and inshallah with the help of Allah Ta'ala if we keep in mind these virtues and inshallah Allah will make it easy for us even in times of tribulations and difficulties like the COVID pandemic and sickness and illness we find death around us we find difficulties around us we need to exercise patience so that in, and be more and consistent with our amal and our good deeds in pleasing Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Inshallah Allah Ta'ala will send good conditions upon us and remove the harm and difficulties that we are facing. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.